So here is the infamous Chadwell Heath police base. This video is just an update on what happened the first time I visited and how my civil actions against them is getting along. Two police guys. Take a picture. You doing there, officer? You okay? What's that, mate? I'm actually videoing, but I'm just doing a little short documentary. Doing a short documentary. No worries. Yeah, no, listen, mate. Um, because obviously this is a police base, and because the clothes you're wearing on a Sunday are slightly out of context for a tradesman, I'm going to take oh. for a search at this moment in time. <laughs> Section 43 of Terrorism Act. No I'm PC Delaney, fine. literally based here, free tier street to leave. I've just told you, PC Delaney, free tier street based to leave, right? So, this is a letter I received from my solicitors dated the 12th of August 2021. By way of an update, I confirm the defendant has rejected your Part 36 offer and their position on liability remains denied. As liability has been denied, the only way to progress matters is to issue court proceedings. Your file was sent to an independent barrister to draft the particulars of claim if he deemed there was to be sufficient prospects of success to issue court proceedings. Unfortunately, the barrister was of the professional opinion that there was less than reasonable prospects of success to issue court proceedings for the following reasons. Although you were not committing an offence by recording the police station, it does not mean that your behaviour was incapable of arousing reasonable suspicion. Your attire, in his professional opinion, does appear slightly unusual, having regard the time and place considering you chose to film the police station. The threat of the terrorist attack in the UK in September 2020 was assessed as substantial. The barrister is of the professional opinion that as reasonable suspicion is a low threshold test, a court is likely to find on the balance of probabilities that DC Delaney had reasonable grounds to justify a search under the section 43 of the Terrorism Act based on the above points. As the barrister does not support your claim, I am unable to issue court proceedings on your behalf. Therefore, I have no alternative but to close your file of papers. Whilst I appreciate this may not be the outcome that you expected or hoped for, the decision to close a file is not one that is taken lightly, as we are unable to recover the work done on your file. The next letter I'm about to show you came from the police solicitors. The claimant was asked about his reasons for filming, and he confirmed he was preparing a short documentary about the police and, in, and the way in which they treated people. He further stated that he was entitled to film as he was on public land. PC Pearson informed the claimant that they had not informed him he was not allowed to film, but they wished to ask him about his reasons for filming a police building. The claimant rejected the suggestion made by PC Upton that his recording the police building appeared to be a strange thing to do, so, or that he was carrying out reconnaissance on a police building. The claimant initially refused to provide his details and was evasive to questions. PC Pearson explained to him that given this current climate, she found it more suspicious that the claimant was refusing to provide his details when he was being searched under the Terrorism Act. His details were eventually obtained at 1434 from a copy of his birth certificate following a search of his phone under the Section 43 Terrorism Act. Checks on his phone also revealed that the claimant had filmed the entire perimeter of the police base and taken photos of police staff and officers in and around London. The footage also shows items with wires and electrical components as the claimant confirmed he worked in demolition, PC Delaney suspected that the claimant may have had access to explosives and as such should remain in handcuffs until identity checks by the officers and any relevant checks undertaken by the Counter-Terrorism Reserve Desk. At 14.56, following further discussion with PC Upton, the claimant confirmed he understood how his actions could appear suspicious. Now, this is one of the reasons the solicitors didn't want to pursue the case. Following verification of the claimant's details and guidance from the Counter-Terrorism Reserve Desks, handcuffs was removed at 14.57 hours and the officers left the claimant at the roadside at 14.59 hours. So guys, as you can tell, obviously the claim was denied and the solicitors um, didn't want to pursue the case. 
to be fair, um, I'm not actually happy with the results and the outcome of the situation. But I'd like to know what everyone's thoughts are in the comments below. So please leave me a comment and let me know how you think um, this was handled. Because I don't think it was handled in the best way possible. But um, I might be wrong. I'm not a solicitor. I'm not a barrister. So, you know, we've got to just take the advice that we've been given by the professionals that we are entrusting to give us the professional advice. So, guys, I've been looking at the analytics and 80% of you ain't subscribed to the channel. Um, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification. Um, peace, love, respect. Stay safe. And I'll catch you in the next one.